yep, 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 yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. Book. 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 Yep. 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 Uh huh. Hi, I'm Granger Metter. I'm in charge of the district's technology and communications these days. And this week, we're providing to all of our pre-K through 8 certified staff one of these cases with a Chromebook inside. If you've got yours with you, take a look at it with me, would you? Let's open up this side pocket and see what's in there. Ah, place for some pins and cards and stuff. And if you reach down inside there, shoulder strap so you can attach it to the case and not have to carry it by the handles if you don't want to. And of course, a charger. Now these Chromebooks will last 10 hours on a full charge, but eventually you gotta charge the sucker. And take a look at one end of that. That little end there is a USB-C connector. You see them on the newer smartphones these days. Kinda like Apple's Lightning connector, in that it doesn't matter which way you plug the darn thing into the Chromebook, it'll still work. That's a win. Let's look in the main compartment for the main event. Look inside here, find the Chromebook. Take a look at it. Seems pretty sturdy, doesn't it? Now these are by Lenovo, not our usual Dell brand that we've been buying recently. If you crack it open, it might power on, but if it doesn't, you can easily turn it on when it's powered all the way off. What you do is you open it up and up here on the upper right side of the keyboard is the power switch. Just click on that and you should get it to come on. And it'll try and find the Wi-Fi and if we're in luck it'll pull up BPS wireless on its own. And then it says sign in. Now if you've never used a Chromebook you're just going to sign in with your usual district email. So it's your username at bps-ok.org and hit enter or next. Then it wants a password. Might as well put in your password, right? Hit next. And, oh, it's trying. It's trying to log me in and, ho, oh, I'm in. Looks here like it's pulling up the Chrome browser for me, which is kind of nice, but I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that. Got a trackpad down here. And there we go. We're up and running. Now, you saw in the little intro that this thing can be used in several modes. Most of the time you're gonna use it like a laptop like this. But if you wanted to set it up for display, you could keep cracking that screen all the way back, something the other Chromebooks we've been buying can't do, and set it up kind of like a little tent. You can just set it on the table and watch it and interact with it even. Or you could lay it flat down, or the keyboard down on the surface of a table, 
and set it up and interact with it like this. But what's really nice is you can put the screen all the way back, right? And now it's a tablet. Now, a thick and heavy tablet, but it's a tablet. The keyboard's disabled. Touchpad doesn't do anything. And on the screen, it's touch sensitive, so you could start up your browser, say. And if you want to start typing something, click up there in the address bar and you should get an on screen keyboard. Let's see if we can trigger that. There we go. I could type in something, trigger it, load in some kind of website. Maybe the district website or something like that. And you'll notice that, of course, we can, you know, shift it around to what we want. Now, you could read a book with this, but the reason we're giving this to teachers and staff like yourselves is that maybe you want to walk around your classroom and carry it with you and be able to interact with it much more comfortably than you would when it's in laptop mode. And there is a dream that Google will eventually provide Android-enabled apps, touch-centric apps, that would run on this Chromebook and would be really useful to have a touch interface for. It's not ready for prime time yet, those Android apps, but they say they're coming. So you're future-proofed for this for a few years. But frankly, most of the time, you're going to be using it in your traditional kind of laptop mode. We know that. Well, we're going to look at some things on how to use one of these Chromebooks in case you're not used to them. But there's still some more things down in that case. If I go scrounging down in here, ah, there's something handy. Since unlike the other Chromebooks most faculty have, yours is a touch screen, you've got a nice little Bruin you can wipe those Dorito stains away with. Or do you like Cheetos? Ruffles? Whatever floats your boat. What else is down here? Well, even though we're providing these to you in an incentive to go as paperless as possible with district meetings, we want you to bring this to every district meeting and use it. Paper's not dead yet, is it? So sure enough, down in your case, I made for you something you just can't hardly find a decent version of with any computer equipment these days, a manual. I wrote this one for you. And it gives you all kinds of nice details about your Chromebook. We'll be taking a look at it in a second. But one thing I want you to know right away is this is paper, so it's not as useful as the electronic version. The electronic version has live links you can click on and go anywhere that I need you to go. So if you ever want to use the real version of this manual, it isn't this. It's online at bpschromebook.org. That's the support site for Chromebooks for all district staff, bpschromebook.org. And that's where you can take a look at it. But I know right now you've got a paper one right in front of you, maybe, so why don't we take a look at it together? What do you say? The front of your manual is a table of contents. If you open it up, on page two, you'll find useful keyboard shortcuts. And the one you really want to remember is Control Alt Question Mark. Because if you do Control Alt Question Mark on a Chromebook, you get a screen like this where you can just hold down keys and see lots of shortcuts, and it's always available on your Chromebook. So make sure you remember that one, Control, Alt, Question Mark. Really handy. Now, if you're not used to Chromebooks, you might notice there's no caps lock on the keyboard, but that's no problem. There's a search key over on the left side, and if you hit Alt, Search, you'll get a caps lock. There's a bunch of function keys along the top of the keyboard. The ones I use the most often are full screen mode to make things a little bigger, and this switch tab key, when you use it with control or even control and shift, can do screenshots on your Chromebook. And I find that useful. There's buttons for keyboard brightness, turn the sound off or up and down volume. There's even a little padlock key on yours that'll quickly lock your Chromebook so that you have it secure. If your eyes are getting a little bit strained by this Chromebook screen, control plus will zoom in. Control minus will zoom out, and Control zero will reset the screen. And there's other shortcuts for moving the cursor around, cut, copy, paste are the usual ones, and all kinds of little hints there. Page three is how you use the touchpad, including some pointers about how to right click and scroll around and stuff. And if you don't like the touchpad and you want to use a mouse, you can always plug one into the USB port on the left side. Any old mouse will probably work. But if you want to go wireless, I'd recommend you use a Bluetooth mouse because that won't use up the Chromebook's battery as fast as the other radio mice will. Logging on is covered on page four. 
and just some hints in the blue boxes for common problems. For instance, if it keeps saying, please wait, and it won't connect to the Wi-Fi, you can do this little trick about setting the date to the correct date, and sometimes that'll fix it. You can get help here if you go to the live version of this manual on bpschromebook.org and get help connecting to Wi-Fi, setting up a phone as a mobile hotspot. There's even a tip over here in case you've never linked your district account with Google and can't log into Chromebooks because of that, how to get that done. On page four, we had that. Page five, we've got just some help links for various services that you can use with a Chromebook and some basic lessons about this area at the bottom of the screen of a Chromebook. Let me show you on mine here. This area down here at the bottom, that's your shelf where you can pin various useful apps. If you click this one on the far left, it brings up the launcher and lets you see more apps. And you can click to see even more apps that you can use. And the right side of your shelf is your status area, where your picture is for your Google account, if you set one up, and the clock and stuff. And if you click on that, there's all kinds of controls that are really handy, including the setup controls with this gear icon and settings in the Chromebook. And sometimes you want to go in there and fiddle with stuff. So that's handy to know. And there's instructions here in the manual about how to customize all those things. And there's a part about Chrome apps and extensions. If you pay attention to my screen up here, you'll see that I have a lot of extensions in my Chrome because I love these little tools I use. And there's a link there where you can get a whole bunch of them that we recommend and have been vetted that you might want to try out with your own Chromebook or just anytime you're logged into the Chrome browser on Windows and so forth. Page seven is all about getting help. And in a Chromebook, you can always click in the status area and hit the question mark to get help. And if you're in the G Suite, when it's running right, you'll see this little icon. And it's a really handy um, interactive training tool with Google Docs and Google Slides and Google Sheets that will guide you through stuff right on the screen with you. It's really handy. So you ought to make use of that if you're not used to Google Docs. Google Drive is how all your stuff is stored up in the cloud on a Chromebook. And there's a link to it right on your shelf. And there's all kinds of things you can do there about sharing files. And if you never really mastered how to share files in Google Drive, there's lots of pages here of instructions, lots of hints about different ways to share things, including public shares and setting up Google groups and things. How to use your Chromebook offline when you don't have Wi-Fi. There's some little tricks you can use to make it able for you to access your Google Docs that you've already loaded into the Chromebook and edit them even when Wi-Fi isn't working. And then they'll sync later when you reestablish connection. So look at that section if you need it. And scrolling on down, we eventually reach hardware information in case you ever need to know it. And stuff about mice and all the ports in the Chromebook and the different controls, stuff you can plug into it. Now, here's a good section for teachers, how to connect to a monitor or projector. Google Cast is the best way to do it, where you just cast this Chromebook screen onto your teacher computer, and then from there it goes on up into the projector for your classroom. And there's instruction about manual dongles if you need to use those to connect to a projector in different situations. And how to use extended desktop with a Chromebook if you ever want to get fancy. How to control the different display controls and so on. And then there's more details about using the built-in camera and the web uh, webcam that it has and some handy services like Screencastify that you can make screen recordings with. That's what I'm using here. Then so there's a page here on printing. So if you ever need to print from your Chromebook, how to do that at home or do it to printers at school. Existing printers, they can work with it. Accessibility features, if you ever need to use some things to make it easier to use a Chromebook or uh, you ever help a student with a Chromebook who has handicap issues or accessibility issues. And then there's all kinds of stuff here about translations and changing the language on the Chromebook and using foreign characters and all kinds of stuff. It's really handy to know. The very back part of your manual is about troubleshooting, about some common ways to address issues and quickly reboot a Chromebook and start over with it, some online help links and so on. But the main thing to remember is BPS Chromebook Org. So let's close with that. If you're ever on a web browser, just go to bpschromebook.org, and right there you'll find a link to the manual for your Chromebook. Or if you have an older model Chromebook, there's links there. Suggested apps and extensions, help links, printing, projecting, help with Google Drive, all the latest and greatest news about what's going on with Chromebooks and so on. So I sure hope you'll make use of this device in ways that will help you as a teacher or in whatever area of the school you work in. And 
Use this not only in meetings and in the classroom, but take it home with you and use it there too, because this is your device to keep and to use as long as you're in district employment. Enjoy.